In this video, I'm going to give you a rundown of Leaving Cert Higher Level Maths Paper 1. I'm going to go through the main topics that appear on this paper and just give you a few tips and tricks on various topics and things that you need to, basically reminding you of things that you need to remember. So if you don't know what to look over um, over the next couple of days before the exam, this might help you just to, to focus your mind and give you something to, to look at. So I suppose the main topic um, for paper one, you're looking at algebra. Algebra, big topic, you got your quadratic equations, cubic equations, um, simultaneous equations, lots of things going on in there. So quadratics, you gotta be able to complete the square. Uh, for quadratics and cubics, you have the factor theorem, um, know the roots of uh, your equations, uh, or if they're given in, as functions, roots of functions, be able to get the roots from a graph and um, be able to recognize the difference between graphs. Uh, simultaneous equations, you can have two or three variables. So two variables, very, very straightforward. Uh, two variables, you might have one where one is linear and one is non-linear. So you're looking at a substitution there. Uh, inequalities then, uh, sorry, uh, simultaneous equations in three variables. Um, they're fairly easy, but they do take a bit of time. So it might take you 10 minutes to do simultaneous equations in three variables, but it's time well spent. So long as you take your time, don't make any mistakes. I often see people making mistakes with signs in these ones, and it messes up the whole question, um, and they'll end up losing marks that they shouldn't lose because it's a straightforward thing to do, three simultaneous equations and three variables, just take your time and do it right. Inequalities then, um, you could have modulus inequalities, uh, quadratic inequalities, regular inequalities, um, solve them like you would an equation, but then at the end, don't forget to draw your graph um, so that you know uh, what sign to use, is it greater than, less than, um, is your answer between two values or is it outside of two values? Um, so you'll, you'll write your solution down slightly different uh, for, each, uh, for each way there. Um, and don't forget the basic rule of inequalities. If you multiply or divide by a minus number, you change the direction of the inequality sign. Um, looking at number then, you might have things like percentage error. Uh, you might have bit of area and volume, you might have to draw a net. Um, uh, they might bring a bit of algebra into it to make it a bit more challenging. So you might have some area and volume in terms of X and Y. Try not to bring too many variables into those type of questions. So if you have uh, a side that's X and a side that's three less than X, then it's X and X minus three. Don't go labeling them X and Y. You're making it too difficult for yourself. Uh, functions then, um, you're looking at, you might have exponential functions, logarithmic functions, um, know about discrete and continuous, know injective, surjective, bijective, um, inverse functions, composite functions. So inverse functions are working backwards, doing the opposite of what you did. Composite functions, putting more than one function together to get a bigger function. Uh, indices and logs then. The log questions are nice. They tend to be fairly similar um, each year. So by that, I mean, if you know your A, E to the KT um, type questions, then they're usually handy enough. You'll have, you'll be given a, a, an initial value and an initial time you might not be told the initial time, it's usually t equal to zero. So if you sub in your initial value and your t equal to zero, then you have a e to the power of kt, K, uh, t is zero. So the power there is zero, kt is zero. Uh, so that'll be a times e to the power of zero, e to the power of zero is one. So a is equal to your initial value. Um, and then you can keep going like that uh, to find k then with other values. Um, then you have sequences and series. So know your S of N formula and your S of infinity formulas during your log tables. Um, financial maths, you got things like present value, 
uh, future value. These are, of course, just different ways of looking at your compound interest formula. So know your compound interest formula. Um, know how to do geometric series. For the geometric series, or for any, any series, uh, and this is back into sequences and series as well, write down some terms of the series or the sequence. Um, write them down so that you can see exactly what's going on and then it'll be clear what your first term is uh, you then will be able to calculate your your uh, common ratio easier and things like that it's just definitely much better practice to write down a few terms of your sequence or series um financial maths then obviously you have your amortization formula so uh, know that one as well um Next, we have complex numbers. So complex numbers, these questions don't vary much year on year. Know things like your modulus, which is basically just your distance, uh, your argument, a little bit of trigonometry coming in there. Uh, no polar form, so be able to go from rectangular form to polar form and vice versa. Um, be able to draw or interpret your Aragon diagram. Uh, what happens when you multiply by i, what happens when you multiply by i squared. Uh, we have our good friend De Moivre. So De Moivre's theorem, pretty likely that you might see some of that. Um, so it's in your log tables there, page 20, know how to use it. Um, and also know how to prove De Moivre's theorem by induction, you might have to do that. Um, it's not an easy proof. If you don't know it, maybe it might be a good idea to have a look over it. So you might be able to have a bit or give uh, an attempt at it when if it comes up in the exam. And then last up, we have our calculus. So, of course, this is split into differentiation and integration. Um, so differentiation first, no first principles. OK, um, it's something that um, like your simultaneous equations in three variables, it's something that is easy once you have learned it. Uh, it's just following the steps and the good thing about first principles is that you know what the answer is going to be at the end so you can take whatever function you're given differentiate it so that you know what the answer is and then go and do your first principles and then you should get the same answer at the end of that as you did when you just used your normal differentiation by rule remember if you're asked for differentiation by first principles you'll get zero marks if you don't do first principles you have to do it that way. You can't just use your rules of multiply down by the power, reduce the power by one. Um, in differentiation, uh, they can bring in a bit of trigonometry here. So be able to differentiate your trig uh, functions. So they're in your log tables. Um, know your product rule, your quotient rule, your chain rule. They're all in the log tables. We'll be able to use them. Be able to use them together. So you could have a question where you have a chain rule within a product rule within a quotient rule. So you know, you have to be able to use them all and use them in the right order. Um, be able to differentiate logs, exponentials, um, your max min problems. So if you're looking for the, the max local max or local min, what you do, you differentiate, you let the derivative equal to zero, you solve for x, you might get one or two values, um, put them in, uh, then differentiate again, uh, to get your second derivative and then input your answers from your first derivative so whatever values you got for x input them into your second derivative and see what the answer is if the answer is greater than zero you have a local min if it's less than zero it's a local max that's kind of um, the opposite to what you would think so greater than zero local min less than zero local max um, you could come across a question with displacement, velocity, acceleration. So you're given displacement function, differentiate to get velocity, differentiate again to get acceleration. Um, integration then, you know how to integrate things like uh, e to the nx, sine nx, cosine nx. If you're given an indefinite integral, make sure you put down plus c at the end. If you're given an indefinite integral, no limits of integration, make sure you put down the plus C. You're losing easy marks there. Uh, your average value formula in your log tables, um, know the trapezoidal rule, not one that comes up too often on higher level. It's more of an ordinary level topic, but 
um, you could be asked to find the area of something using the trapezoidal rule, then find the area of the same thing using integration, and then find the percentage error. So that's bringing number back into it again. So there's lots of things going on in paper one. Remember that they can ask you any topics. So there's nothing to say that there won't be a bit more trigonometry on paper one than usual. You could get a bit of probability. Anything can come up. There's no rules to say that uh, you have to be asked only paper one topics. Uh, so you have to be aware of that and be able to use or be able to do any topic or any question that they ask. Uh, some other tips. Don't forget to have a calculator in with you. Uh, if you have two, brilliant. Bring two calculators with you. If you only have one, make sure it works. Make sure you can see all your numbers clearly. You, I've seen so many calculators where the numbers are all worn away and it just makes it more difficult to use. Log tables, you'd get them in the exam center. You can't bring them in yourself. Uh, so they're the exact same as what you've been using in class. Uh, so there's no difference there. Bring in plenty of pens, pencils. Uh, if you're drawing graphs, use a pencil, um, use a ruler. And remember that maths is being marked online this year. It's not being marked. Your, your paper is going to be scanned. But it was clarified by the State Examinations Commission that you can write in pen or in pencil. The only thing that you have to be careful with is that you stay inside the boxes. Okay, If you write outside the boxes, that may not be picked up on the scan or it may not come up on the examiner's screen. So pen or pencil doesn't matter. Okay, um, that's all I have. If you have any questions, ask them there below. I'll see. I'll try my best to answer them. I'll be. I'll have my. Uh, I'll have my laptop open now over the next couple of days, so I should get to any questions uh, fairly quickly. Um, and best of luck in the exam. Remember, just do your best, and you've done all the hard work over the last couple of years. So if you have it done. Make sure you get a good night's sleep beforehand, and you'll do fine.